Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning, dear students. In this lecture, we will be discussing the major revolutionary movements originated in different parts of the country spanning between 1906 1918. This period came into known as the first phase of the revolutionary movement in India. First of all, we will be looking at the circumstances circumstances behind the growth of revolutionary movements in India. The first reason was that failure on the part of moderates. The moderates who dominated the first phase of the Indian National Congress from 1885 to 1906. During the first phase of the Indian National Congress dominated by the moderate elements of the Indian National Congress could not achieve anything substantial from the British administration in India. They submitted a list of economic and political demands to the British government, it fell on deaf ears. None of these political and economic demands were accepted by the British government. Over and again, they failed to attract the younger generations of the younger generations the moderates were urban middle class intelligentsia urban middle class intelligentsia most of them were the products of the british system of administration they were the urban middle class English educated intelligentsia. They could not attract the younger generations to their fault. It was one of the reasons behind the rise of revolutionary movements in India. Now go to the second reason. <coughs> what was the second reason? Attitude of the British government. What was the attitude of the British government? It was with the best wishes and blessings of British administration in India. Indian National Congress was formed in 1885. The Britishers thought that Indian National Congress would remain as an academic affair confined to intellectuals. The Britishers thought that Indian National would remain in academic matters and would confine to intellectuals. But soon the British realized that it was growing into a national movement. Then Lord Dufferin during the vice royalty of Lord Dufferin, Indian National Congress was formed. Lord Dufferin called Indian National Congress 
as a microscopic minority. What was the response of Lord Curzon? Lord Curzon stated that his greatest mission in India, his greatest mission in India was to give a feasible demise. a feasible demise to Indian National Congress. This was the attitude of Lord Carson towards Indian National Congress. Even though their economic and political demands were not accepted by the British government, by 1905 they demanded Swaraj or self rule. At the Benara session of Indian National Congress, it was demanded by Gobala Krishna Gogale. Gobala Krishna Gogale demanded that Swaraj or self rule would be introduced in India at the Congress session of the Indian National Congress convened at Benares in 1905. In the next year, in 1906, Dadabai Navaroji he was the first Indian to be elected to British Parliament, first Indian elected to British Parliament. His monumental work, Poverty and Un-British Rule in India, Poverty and Un-British Rule. Dada Bhai Navaroji, he in the annual session of the Indian National Congress convened at Calcutta in 1906 demanded self-rule or Swaraj. In 1905 at the Benara session of the Indian National Congress, Kupala Krishna Gogali demanded Swaraj. In 1906 at the Calcutta session of the Indian National Congress, Dada Bhai Navaroji demanded that Swaraj or self rule would be introduced in India. From this, the Britishers now realized that the Indian National Congress could not be considered as mere academic affair or an organization of intellectuals. And the Britishers now could not deny the demand put to forward by the moderate elements of the Indian National Congress. Something needed to be done to suppress the moderates. This was the second reason behind the growth of revolutionary movement in the country. Thirdly, Partition of Bengal of Bengal and Sodeshi movement. How did the partition of Bengal and Sodeshi movement affect the growth of revolutionary tendencies? Partition of Bengal was carried out by Lord Curzon in 1905, Viceroy Lord Curzon, in order to divide Hindus and Muslims and to weaken Indian nationalism. But the Indian nationalism 
fully fanned the national sentiments fanned across the country against the partition of Bengal Sodeshi movement was organized it was the first largely mobilized movement it was for the first time a mass mobilization witnessed in the country no doubt moderates and extremists moderates and extremists participated in the Sodeshi movement the moderates wanted to confine only in Bengal what about the extremists they wanted to spread Sodeshi movement to other parts of the country other parts of India despite the participation of moderates and extremists in the Sodeshi movement the British government ruthlessly suppressed the Sodeshi movement it was ruthlessly suppressed The partition of Bengal could not be revoked despite stiff resistance from people in Bengal. Partition of Bengal was carried out by Lord Carson on 16 October 1905. Sodeshi movement was ruthlessly suppressed in Jugandar there was a plea that the force should be the force should be stopped by force. So, the Asian movement was ruthlessly suppressed by the British following which in Jugandar it was published that the British force should be stopped by force leading to the rise of revolutionary elements in the country for carrot and stick policy of the British. carrot and stick policy of the British. What was this policy? As you have been told earlier, the moderates they demanded Suraj in 1905 and 1906. The moderates demanded Suraj or self rule. So, they would be reconciled. So, Rajis should be brought it to British administration. And then create division within the ranks of extremists and moderates. Then the extremists should suppress it once more all. This policy came into known as carrot and a stick policy. It included repression, conciliation and suppression. This policy of the British government came into known as carrot and a stick policy. What is repression? Repression means that the extremists should be suppress it or re repress it. Conciliation means that moderates moderates it to be brought to British side and then 
create a division between the moderates and extremists, it would provide a golden opportunity to suppress extremists once for all. Repression of the extremists, they were considered as the real enemies of the British administration by the British. They should be repressed, create dissensions within the ranks of the moderates and extremists. Moderates it to be brought to the side of the British administration. It uh, came in known as rallying of the moderates. It was raised by then Secretary of State for India, John Morley, Secretary of State for India. Secretary of State for India, John Morley raised that rallying of moderates, that is bringing the moderates to the side of the British to strengthen British charge in India create division within the ranks of extremists and moderates, then the extremists would become weak and they would easily be suppressed. This policy of the British government came into known as carrot and stick policy. Even during the course of the Sudeshi movement in 1906, the moderates discussed it with the British authorities the next constitutional reforms. While Sudeshi movement was going on in 1906, the moderates discussed the mode of constitutional reforms to be introduced in the country and the moderates agreed to cooperate with the British administration, agreed to cooperate with the British. During the period of the Sudeshi movement, what was the main intention behind this? It was to create division between moderates and extremists. In order to create division between moderates and extremists, the British used it to conduct discussions on the constitutional reforms to be introduced in the country during the course of the Sudeshi movement. This was the policy adopted by the British. Once the moderates fell into the trap, the extremists could easily be suppressed once for all. Neither the moderates, neither the moderates nor the extremists where extremists aware of it and they used it to pay heavy price later for this kind of unawareness they were trapped by the predators next surat split In the Surat split, Raj Bihari Hose was the presidential candidate of moderates, presidential candidate Raj Bihari Hose. Rashbigari Hose was the presidential candidate of the moderates in the Surat session of the Indian National Congress convened in 1907. Extremists Balaganga Adirat Tilak was the candidate of the extremist. In this session of the Indian National Congress convened at Surat. Balagangadra Tilak was outvoted. Being outvoted, Balagangadra Tilak left Indian National Congress. This is, this was what the Britishers aimed to create. The Britishers earlier aimed to create 
division within the ranks of extremists and the moderates. So, they could easily suppress the extremist elements. Now, with the Surat split, the extremists left from Indian National Congress. Mindo immediately returned to Morley. Morley was then the Secretary of State for India. Mindo was the Viceroy. British emerged victorious. British emerged victorious. Mindo wrote morally that the collapse of the Indian National Congress at Suraj. Immediately, the Viceroy Mindo wrote a letter to the Secretary of State for India morally that collapse of the Indian National Congress at Surat. The British saw it a golden opportunity to suppress extremist elements within the Indian National Congress. Logamania Balagangadra Tilak was arrested and he was sent to Mandalaya jail. Mandalaya jail for six years imprisonment. Tilak was arrested and he was sentenced to six years imprisonment at Mandalaya jail. Aravinda Hosh He was trapped in Alipur conspiracy case. Alipur conspiracy case. However, the police trapped Aravinda Hosh in Alipur conspiracy case. He was exonerated. He was exonerated by judiciary. And later he escaped it to Pondicherry. It was considered as an opportune time to suppress the extremist elements once for all. So, the Britishers arrested Logamani Balagangadra Tilak and sentenced it to six years imprisonment and sent it to Mandalaya jail. Aravinda Ghosh was trapped in Alipur conspiracy case. However, the judiciary removed all charges leveled against Aravinda Hosh. However, he escaped to Pondicherry. Then what did happen to Vivan Chandrapal? He retired from active politics. Retired from active politics. Lala Lajipatroi What happened to Lala Lajipatroi? He went to England in 18 not sorry in 1908 and came back in 1909 and went to United States of America for a long stay. Now the extremists were rendered leaderless, no leader. All the leaders were suppressed by the Britishers. Tilak was arrested and sent to jail. Aravinda Ghosh went to Pondicherry because of police excess. B. C. Paul, Vivan Chandrabal retired from active politics. Lalaji went to United States of America for a extended stay. Now, extremist was rendered leaderless. These were the circumstances behind the growth of revolutionary movements in the country.
they believed that western imperialism western imperialism could be overthrown by western method of violence they used it to purchase arms and manufactured bombs they also recruited younger generations of the indian society and distributed arms and they were taught how to make bombs they believed that by killing british officials they could demoralize demoralize british officials demoralize by killing british officials the revolutionary leaders thought that they could demoralize british officials paralyze the british administration in india paralyze the british administration in india and uproot the enemies this was the method adopted by the revolutionary leaders then for finance in order to finance revolutionary activities they engaged in looting of banks train derailment for getting finance they used it, looting of banks derailment of trains murder and dacoity dacoities these were the methods used by the revolutionary leaders for finding finance their revolutionary activities in the country even though this kind of intensive revolutionary movements acquired character only in 1907 1908 there were certain earlier examples of the revolutionary activities in the country let us examine the early revolutionary activities in the country first one in 1897 damodar and balkrishna Damodar and Balakrishna. They killed two British officials. They killed two British officials in Pune. In Pune, Damodar and Balakrishna, Chabegar, popularly known as Chabegar Brothers, they killed two British officials at Pune. in 1897 secondly in maharashtra in 1904 bd savarkar and his brother ganesh organized two secret societies mitra mela and afinav farat in 1904 in maharashtra bd savarkar and his brother ganesh savarkar organized two secret societies mitra mela and afinav farat in bengal 
Mitra founded another secret society. It came in known as Anushilan Samidhi. Anushilan Samidhi. Another secret society in Bengal was Yugandar. Yugandar. It was a secret society in Bengal. These were the early kinds of revolutionary activities, but the revolutionary activities in intensive form came in 1907. In 1907, an unsuccessful attempt was made to kill the Lieutenant Governor of Bengal. In 1907, an unsuccessful attempt was made to kill Lieutenant Governor of Bengal. Six Alipur conspiracy case. Alipur conspiracy case, 1908. What was Alipur Conferency case of 1908? Two revolutionary leaders, Profulla Chaki and Kudrambos, and Kudrambos. They threw a bomb on a carriage which they believed that was occupied by Kingsford. Kingsford, the unpopular judge of Musafarpur, Musafarpur in present day Bihar. But unfortunately, it was occupied by two ladies. These two ladies died on the spot. Prafulla Chaki shot that himself. Kudiram was escaped, but he was captured by the British and hanged to death. In the Alipur conspiracy case, Kudiram Bos and Prafulla Chaki threw a bomb on a carriage which they believed that was travelling Kingsford, the unpopular judge of Musafarpur, but it uh, had originally been occupied by two ladies. By bombing these two ladies died on the spot. Prafulla Chaki shot that on the spot, but Kudiram was once later captured by the British and hanged it to death. This came in known as Alipur conspiracy case. As you have been told earlier, Aravind Ghosh was trapped in this case, but he was exonerated by the judiciary, but his brother was sent for long time imprisonment. Another revolutionary event was Rash Bihari. Bose and Sachin Sanyal. They tried to kill Viceroy Lord Harding. in 1912. While he was riding an elephant at Chandini Chauk near Delhi, he 
while he was riding an elephant on a state procession Rash Bihari Bose and Sachin Sanyal tried to kill the Viceroy Lord Hardingji by throwing bomb, but the bombo, bombo was actually fell on the attendants. So, the attendants were killed, Viceroy escaped with injuries. Next, Carlson Wiley. Carson Wiley had earlier been served with the British Indian Army before settling in London. He took pride in killing of innocent Indians. Carson Wiley indulged in the innocent killing of Indians. In 1909, Madanlal Dingre shot that Carson Wiley to London. Carson Wiley he was one of the unpopular army officer. During his service period, he indulged in killing of innocent in Indians. After retirement, he went back to Britain. Madanlal Dingre went to London to kill Carson Wiley and he was shot dead in 1909. Next, Lala Hardayal. Another revolutionary movement was started by Lala Hardayal. It was founded in North America. It was founded in North America. In North America, the Punjabi migrants they were subject to many kinds of humiliation and discrimination. Humiliation and discrimination. handed out to these Punjabi emigrants settled in North America. They saw Lala Hardayal as a leader to organize against this discrimination and humiliation of the Punjabi emigrants in North America. In 1913, Lala Hardayal, who settled in United States of America in 1911 and he had been lecturing at Stanford University since then, these Punjabi emigrants saw their leader in Lala Hardayal. In 1913, they organized Gadar Party. against the discriminatory and humiliating practices of the white population in North America. They started a journal called Gadar. It started publication in 1913 from San Francisco.
from San Francisco, the journal Gedar started public publication and its first edition was in Urdu. Through the publication of the journal Gedar, Lala Hardayal tried to spread the message of nationalism and secondly the British policies, British policies pursued in India. In this journal Gedar they heavily criticized the economic policies of the British government like a drain of wealth, commercialization of agriculture, commercialization of agriculture, land revenue policies of the British government. And these newspapers were widely circulated among the Punjabi emigrants and other Indians, firstly in the United States of America. First of all, this newspaper was widely circulated in United States of America. Later, this journal was sent to Philippines, China, Hong Kong, Malaya. Through the publication of this Gadar journal, Lala Hardayal tried to spread the message of nationalism among the emigrants not only in United States and Canada, but also different parts of the country. Later this journal was sent it to India as well. This Gadar party was well aware that the Indians would be respected in foreign land, Indians would be respected in foreign lands only if mother country would get freedom. Or mother country freed. This Gadar party was well aware that they would be honored in foreign lands only mother India got freedom from the British yoke. In order to free India this message was widely circulated among the Indian masses, among the Indian masses and Indian army men, in Indian army men. But in 1913, Lala Hardayal was arrested. Lala Hardayal was arrested by the American police as per the directions given by British authorities in India. And he was, however, he was arrested by the American authorities. He was released on jail. He jumped off the bail and went to Switzerland.
Gomagada Maru incident was related to Gadar party. A ship Gomagada Maru was sent from Southeast Asia to Canada. Canada maintained strict immigration laws and they used it to allow only the ships directly reach it Canadian waters. Only the ships with a direct passage from India to Canada was allowed you know, on Canadian ports. But Gomagadam Ayu, they started from Southeast Asia and during his voyage from Southeast Asia to Canada, it stopped at many ports and Gedar leaders, Gedar leaders visited the ship, delivered lectures and distributed formulas. Once this Gomagadamaru ship reached Canadian water, the Canadian police cordoned off the ship and nobody was allowed, nobody was allowed to enter into port. And the ship was sent back to Barch Barch in Calcutta. Once it reached in Calcutta, due to the hostility with the police, 18 persons died. The Canadian authorities did not allow the ship it to enter into the port and this ship was sent back to Calcutta. During this time, First World War broke out. Once the ship reached at Budge Budge in Calcutta, here also the police cordoned off and in hostility with the police, 18 persons died, around 222 persons were arrested by the British police and the remaining persons escaped and it was through the repressive measures adopted by the British government, the Gadar party was ruthlessly suppressed. These were the major revolutionary movements during the first phase till 1918. Now, suppression, how did the British suppress these revolutionary movements in India? 186 revolutionaries were either killed or given long term prison terms. The British government ruthlessly suppressed the revolutionary movements, 186 revolutionaries were either killed or were given long term prison terms by the British government. During the period between 1908 and 1918, secondly draconian laws
draconian laws were put into effect by the British administration for the effective suppression of the revolutionary activities in the country. Thirdly, lack of popular support The revolutionary movements failed to attract the support of the masses. They were eagerly awaiting a movement which give an opportunity to express their own views. No doubt the revolutionary movements only created individual heroes, but it did not make much appeal among the masses. These were the messages through which the British ruthlessly suppressed the revolutionary movements. Government adopted revolution, government adopted repressive methods, it mobilized it, entire governmental machinery, draconian laws were put into effect for the effective suppression of these revolutionary movements in the country. Now, the major questions from this topic. Who was the founder of Anishil and Samidhi? Second, to which prison Logamania Balagangadra Tilak Question number three What were the circumstances behind the rise of revolutionary movements in India. Question number 4. In what way the Dar party work? What was Goma Geda? Mayu incident. In what way did British suppress revolutionary movements? What were the major revolutionary movements, revolutionary activities TV nineteen oh seven to nineteen fifteen? These are the questions you are expected to answer. Thank you watching my lecture.